Will CSL Elite pedals make you faster? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the channel. My name is Matt, and rather than taking 5 years, 32 minutes, and 85 seconds to describe my full story about how I got here, I want to kind of jump right into things. So in one of my previous videos, I discussed, is a Fanatic CSL DD wheelbase faster than a controller? And rather, we discovered that it could be? I mean, the biggest point being said is, it makes you more consistent. So in that same theme of videos per se, of essentially fanatic reviews, I'll be honest. Will the CSL Elite pedals make you faster? So I am getting right into uh, a set of Corsa de Compensione. We're going to be playing on Spa with our Lamborghini Huracan GT3. And how this is going to work is Long story short about what happened in the previous video. All right, so here's how this is going to work. I'm actually going to disconnect my wheel so you guys can see exactly what's going on. So with the McLaren V2 wheel, you've got your shifters up here, and you've actually got these extra little, I believe that they would actually be meant for your clutches, per se. In this situation, I'm actually going to do the shifting with the top paddles, as you would. But with these bottom little clutch paddles those are actually going to be my accelerator and my brake so this is going to be the weirdest test i've ever done here what i needed to do is i needed to update firmware on the csl elite pedals by ordering a usb adapter and then i found out that it was just the sitting on the wheel that made the pedals not work so i'll kind of show you what was going on so with the wheel as you can tell in the middle, you've got this little switch in the middle. Nope, yeah, in the middle. And the option one apparently was clutch and, like, clutch grip or something. Let me just plug it in to confirm this. Clutch bite point. So setting A was clutch bite point. Setting B was uh, clutch and handbrake. In setting C was the throttle and brake. So what happened is when I was trying to start the car, it was with a clutch uh, bite point. I had no idea how to like actually operate this whole system yet because I could register the throttle inputs, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't actually moving the vehicle. And after just tuning some settings and realizing my mistake, you know, easy fix, just switch the thing in the middle and we're good. So how the setup is going to work is I'm going to start with just the wheel as we discussed or as we did exactly the same with the CSL DD video where the throttle and the brake are on the little bottom paddles of the McLaren V2 GT3 wheel. And then we'll try once again with the CSL Elite pedals themselves. And for the first time ever and probably only time ever, I have a foot cam. So please enjoy the slippers there. So pedals work there. We're in our... Interesting. Apparently throttle and brake on the steering wheel also works with the pedals. So I'm going to keep my feet away from the pedals and not try to screw around with this. But my initial thoughts with the pedals is that they are somewhat well built. I had an issue with pedals earlier, obviously, like the very lack of consistent messaging across their uh, control panel, really describing what the issue actually was. Um, I think they need to rework that control panel a little bit to make more sense. But the other thing, too, is I wish that there were, like, motors or something in the pedals to give any slight amount of force feedback, because it's been really difficult, like, with just the throttle pedal where you push your foot down and you get zero resistance and I'm not a huge fan of the brake pedal either but then the whole other thing that I had an issue with as well is when I bought the CSL Elite pedals I have every full intention about gaining a shifter so I was just going to grab a CSL Elite load cell when I needed it and within a month of me ordering and acquiring the CSL Elite pedals Fanatic just up and said no we're not carrying the load cell anymore so what will most likely happen is when I eventually go 
get a shifter is I'll actually have to get the V3 pedals and whether it be the normal or the inverted we'll find out. So I'm not really happy about all that but I mean it's life. <laughs> have no control over a lot of it. So I'm just doing a warm-up lap here. Um, barely just even warming up the tires. I did a couple of practice sessions of Spa with this vehicle and this setup, with well, both setups. And I believe with the pedals, I had gotten into the low 231s. So that's ideally what I'm going to be looking for. So we're going to find out how we do here. We're coming through back here. I don't have a map pulled up, so I can't go off of turn names right now. I do apologize about that. I'll actually change that. I've acquired a map. All right, so we're going to do, I wouldn't call them warm-up laps, but I'm just going to try my best to set the best time that I can with the, just the wheel alone here. So we're going down to list source, or rather turn one. And the problem with this setup is that, this weird overhand thing, and we've immediately invalidated the lap. Which, I mean, it's a warm-up lap, so I'm not going to be too concerned about it. We're going to go into fifth gear up here, and I always want to take El Rouge. El Rouge. El Rouge, sorry. I want to take a Rouge and Radion. Radion. What is with my pronunciations today? El Rouge and Radion. Uh, I always want to take a Rouge flat, and depending on the car that I'm in, I might be able to. Uh, this car is not one of those. Um, and because I was busy commentating while trying to drive, I also shifted down, which I found out through the practice runs that you don't need to. You just brake a little bit and you're fine. So we're going to go down here to turn 10, and we're very wide here. We're not going to quite shift up yet, but we're going to break through turn 11. Kind of follow it through. Here we go. I want to say we go up to fifth gear and then we'll go down to third around turn 12. I remember always understeer being an issue down here running wide, so we'll be careful of that. The first part of turn 12 is normally the big issue, but then we come down here, drop three gears, feather it through, break again. Still kind of feathering it. Come out strong. Don't quite get to fourth gear, but we'll go back down to second. In the grass quite a bit here. Go up to third. Not quite downshift, but definitely brake and let off the throttle. Coming up through... Oh, where are we now? End of 16. Now this part I haven't quite figured out. Whether it's downshift worthy, I think it might be... So you can get the higher RPM to 5th, and then come back into 6th. But then we'll just brake heavy. I think we broke a little bit early there, and we'll do our weird overhand, give a little bit of a feather into the throttle coming on through the chicane. 2.34 with an invalidated lap time, I kind of figured that we wouldn't have gotten far. This might be a turn, a first gear corner as well, and we lose a lot of time there. Probably, I don't know, a quarter of a second to half a second, not being able to put down the throttle immediately coming out of the source. So coming up through a rouge, we'll just brake a little bit, feather, feather the throttle up through Radion, up into fifth gear. I want to say we get up to about 160. This car really doesn't have that much of a top speed, which I'm a little bit disappointed about. But again, we're going to go back into second. Not quite out of it yet. There we go. Turn nine already. So a lot of people are probably asking 
who in the world would use this setup? And it's taken me a lot of thought to really understand this, but I'm actually quite happy that Fnatic has a wheel of this kind of nature. I don't know if this was necessarily created uh, with this idea in mind for their... Long story short, I don't know if this is a full-scale replica of, like, everything you see on the wheel is pretty much identical to the real wheel, or if it's just taking their own ideas and adding it a little bit. But the one thing that I had here is, you know, this wheel here, being the cheapest wheel in their entire range of wheels, is a very good entry into their ecosystem. And this would have made sense from a budget side of things if you're only able to afford a wheelbase and the steering wheel, but that's already 600 bucks and a lot of these pedals, they're only 100 bucks now. So it's, if you're spending that kind of money anyway, well, you, you might as well buy pedals. But the other thought that I was having too, um, I was thinking about this where uh, people like Lewis Hamilton's brother, Nicholas Hamilton, who has actually got like cerebral, yeah, cerebral palsy, where his legs don't work all that great. I mean, he has gone through some, you know, treatment of being able to gain his muscles back in his legs, and I'm like really happy for him, really proud of him, being able to go into actual racing while having a quite substantial disability but I'd imagine with anybody else who has a similar disability where you know pedals or using your legs to operate the pedals just really isn't an option if you can somehow make this overhand thing work with this wheel I think you could be pretty close to at a competitive rate Yes, there are some things that you would probably want to be tweaking on it to being able to get throttle out of corners that you have to do a lot of steering input, or you could do the other thing and adjust the steering input to be a little bit more sensitive so you're not having to turn the wheel 180 degrees. But these are all different methods that you can make work, and the flexibility I do really appreciate. Uh, they've got... A, apart from the firmware updates, I feel like Fnatic has a pretty good tool of the control panel where you can really go in, in deep and really adjust settings. And if for those settings aren't deep enough to what you want to play around with, they have the Fanalab program, which I don't know why they have both of them. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like you either, you either use one or the other. It's like you use a control panel to update firmware, and then you can do everything else in Fan and Lab. <laughs> but anywho. I go to give this probably one more lap. So I'm not spending my entire day doing this race in this setup. But the one thing that I really, really, really do like about Fnatic or Fanatec is that the uh, disconnecting the wheel and changing settings on the wheel and all the rest of that is like being able to change settings on the fly in your game. And I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. The fact that you don't have to go into like a pause screen or absolutely anything regarding that or the game automatically pausing when you disconnect the wheel, I am very ecstatic about. And I'll bring that up in a moment, but I'm going to focus a little bit to do this lap right. Ugh. That's going to cost me significant time. Just, uh bugger. Coming down straight here. You're up in fifth gear. Again, we're going to break. I don't know if you want to break at the base or if you want to break halfway up Oruz, but I don't know yet. Apparently breaking at the base has gotten me quarter of a second up on my time, so I'm not going to complain. Going through the Kimmel straight, waiting for a breaking point. So over here, yes, I'm using the racing line because I am bad at this game. Not quite into third, again. A little bit uh, close to the apex. 
Bring it down to second once again. Break, 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 break. Kind of feathering the break. Don't know why I quite up. Sh I keep up. <clears throat> I keep up shifting there, and I don't know why. It's not a good place to upshift. It's pretty evident of that. The other thing, too, that I was thinking about is if, for instance, that you're buying this equipment secondhand and you can only find, like, a CSL Elite for... on the cheap and just this wheel and you're waiting for your pedals to come into the mail and will get shipped through the mail because there's a lot of extended delays. Like, I've had at minimum, like, a two-week shipping turnaround time and the time frame from the actual items being shipped by Fnatic to when I've originally ordered them, months. It's really, really crappy on the consumer side of things, but they're doing the best that they can right now, apparently, so... I'll give them props for being an insanely small company and yet being able to keep up with any sort of demand of sim racing right now. So I lied, I'm gonna do this one more time, see if I can get a... How did I get to a 230? Huh. Even with this garbage here. Significant time lost, still quarter to half a second, but even with that last time being quote-unquote invalidated and still got into the high... 230s. Again, I'm not quite sure why I also upshifted. But I digress. Come on through here. Again, not shifting out a second yet. There we go. I really want to see, like, a track time analyzer of how my... where I'm picking up this time, because I am... a second... No, 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 no! Oh, I saved it! <laughs> I felt like I was going too wide that I would have invalidated it again. I don't know where he shaved a second off. I wonder if it was Eau Rouge. Going through campus. Not quite out of second. There we are. I don't know if it's realistic or not, but I have noticed that even with this wheel, that Occasionally when I'm downshifting, specifically downshifting, it won't register, but, um... I wonder if that's... <laughs> going hyper-realism, where sometimes your transmission doesn't register when you're actually driving the car? I don't know. It's coming up through here to the chicane. Still a little bit early. Get that throttle coming through. Thank you. Two seconds down. Wow. Two thirty. Point five, essentially, point five five. That is the best time that I've seen throughout all my practice sessions. I'm not even joking. The highest I got with the, the pedals was a 231.1. So, y'all think I'm crazy by doing just the wheel and not using the pedals at all? It's viable. It's awkward, and this, this overhand thing, like, it's, it's really bad, and you lose a lot of time through it.
but like it's still feasible but we're going to go from option c to option b i'll bring myself closer a little bit here and let's try some laps with the pedals So first of all, the thing that I was noticing as well with the pedals is that you really, really, really want to make sure that depending on what types of pedals that you've gotten, uh, most people do not have full regs or wheelbase stance or the whole nine. Finding like a nice good wall or set of books or absolutely anything to put your pedals up against so they don't slide around is kind of a necessity. So the nice thing about the Fanatic CSL Elite pedals is that they, even though they don't feel like that they have the best quality as far as feeling, their build quality is exceptional because I don't know if it's like aluminum or if it's like really nice thick plastic. I don't actually know. Um, but it feels durable. It feels like there's there's like no flex. And apparently the replacement for the CSL Elites, which is just the normal CSL pedals, I don't know the terminologies or the types of sensors. I think it's like a potentiometer or something. This is the more preferred one that's in the uh, standard CSL pedals. So in all honesty, if you have no intention of getting a shifter, you just want a set of pedals, no clutch pedal, no nothing, do the CSL Elites. Because with this setup, if you're going to do exclusively like GT3 racing, or you're going to play like in Forza with just GT3 cars and you won't need a manual shifter for anything, Paddle shifters and the CSL Elite are kind of the way to go for that. Because I believe that the build quality of the Elites are a little bit more rigid than the standard uh, CSL pedals. Of course, the standard CSL pedals are also cheaper. So, depending on your budget, if you want slightly... If you want to make sure that you have expandability being able to add the load cell or the clutch pedal um, go for the normal CSL pedals and see if you can attach it to like a couple of pieces of wood or see if you can attach it to a rig or just make sure that the CSL pedals are somewhere that they're going to be nice and sturdy if that all makes sense kind of But yeah, so far, even though I'm commenting and doing a horrible job driving, uh, everything right now, it just feels more natural. Like, you just... When you're driving your own car, when you press down your right foot, you go faster. And instead of having your feet just do nothing while you race, or when I've done the uh, just standard wheel setup, I've normally sat like kind of crisscross in a way. It's just kind of funny. But this way, you can actually probably build up muscle in your legs, too, because you're putting pressure on your brakes, on your left foot. I don't know. And it's just... The difference that I have is kind of the same metaphor that I'll use when I first started um, doing, like, manual shifting in racing games on controller. It's... You feel more involved. And that helps the realism aspect, is if you're sitting there with an automatic trans transmission, it's kind of ho-hum, but with this, I'm commentating. I'm driving poorly, yes. But it's become second nature to, when I hear the revs go higher, to just flick up the shift. I 
happened a couple of times in practice, so honestly, I'm I'm not <laughs> not surprised that it happened. And I think damage or whatever is off, so that shouldn't affect our next couple of laps. I mean, accidents happen. That's why they're called accidents and not... Well, they also do call them crashes, so fair. <laughs> the only critique that I have to the pedal setup is that if you are in, like, a, an office chair of some flavor, you gotta find ways to stabilize your chair so it's not rolling away from you because you will find yourself... I find myself subconsciously, like, adjusting my seating position. Um... And it's gotten bad enough where I've actually ordered a... I'm surprised that didn't hit track limits. Nice. I actually ordered a um, wheel st wheelbase stand. The Next Level Racing Wheel Stand 2.0, I think it's called or something. Where it's got the additional feature of being able to attach a seat later and you have a full cockpit. But for the time being, it's going to be really nice because it's got a foldable feature where you can fold it up and store it away nice and easily. And they've actually also got a little, I don't even know what you want to call it, but a little plate that comes down where you can set your chair wheels in. And they'll move around, I'd imagine, some, or rather minimally, but you won't have to constantly pull yourself forward. It'll hit kind of the back end of the plate and then it'll just kind of stop you. So I'm excited about that. That should be coming in, I don't know, the end of November sometime. So probably in two or three videos time you'll see me screwing around with that. I might actually make an unboxing video about it. We'll find out. I'm excited for it. But anywho, we're coming through uh, turn 14, now going into 15. I'm going to be honest, I don't feel like I've been doing a great job racing or doing a great job lap of, um, you know, staying on the racing line or doing a great lap time or anything of that kind of nature. But apparently when I was just checking moments ago, um, it was three quarters of a second down from my best time. Yeah, best time. Even right now, I'm like half a second down. I'm going to focus a little bit here. There we go, 2.30. So click baby title proved. Yes, you technically are faster with the CSL elites. And so only because I feel like that we've made up a little bit of time by doing not having to do that weird overhand method. But after I finally figured out all my technical issues, one of the first games that I tried with the pedals was actually a Forza, Forza Motorsport 7. And... Apparently, among the community, it's, say, it's stated that Motorsport is best played with a wheel and Horizon is best with a controller. And currently, I will absolutely agree with that. Horizon right now, uh, we've got problems where even with the hotfix that was released um, earlier last week, mid-last week, when the time this uh, recording is released, uh, Fanatic wheels still will crash the game intermittently. So I'm a little bit disappointed about that, uh, again, that um, they weren't able to get that solved with the hotfix. But the hotfix in general shows that you, the game is like 100% stable. Well, maybe not 100% stable, but very stable with controller, finally. And a little bit of an oversteer issue there. I wasn't able to really correct it. We went off track. That's yeah, fine. I've already set my personal best lap time anyway. And we're in the grapple trap. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, Short-ish video, I'd imagine. But yeah, I, it's 
the reason why you get the pedals, especially CSL, is so it feels more natural. I mean, if you're coming from a Logitech wheel, the fact that you can get the wheel, the wheelbase, and the pedals for under $250, so if you're starting out sim racing, I will still stand by it. Please buy a Logitech or a Thrustmaster. It is way cheaper. Like 95% of your skill level will be established at that point. The additional 5% uh, skill level increase that you'll get by getting like, you know, Fanatic wheelbase and whatnot is, is totally not necessary for first timers, which I say that ironically because this is my first wheel since about 2003. <laughs> so please just buy those instead. But if you already have, um, if you're looking at upgrading to Fanatic products, I think the CSL Elite pedals are, are perfectly fine. The, again, the only issue that I have is that, keep in mind, the load cell is dis discontinued. So I don't even know if there's a way to even buy like an extra set, use set, one of those pedals as your clutch. If you're going to that route, just, just save your money and go get the normal CSL pedals. You're going to get you know more up-to-date products, more up-to-date firmware, you're not going to have a weird, sketchy system. Or if you do really have a lot of money, um, getting the uh, Club Sport V3 pedals with the brake damper kit, I want to say. Yeah, that's going to run you probably about $425, $450. But if you're already at this level, I probably will be releasing a review eventually. <laughs> it's going to be a while before I acquire that, but we'll talk about that then. So, will these CSL Elite pedals make you faster? Uh, kind of? Probably? Again, it's a little bit difficult to, to judge, especially if you have a good wheel that you're able to button map it to be able to have the accelerator and brake also on the wheel itself versus, you know, getting separate pedals. But in 2021, going into 2022, would I recommend the CSL Elites? It's kind of also difficult to tell because with them if we were talking six months ago to a year ago when the load sale was still an option like hands down hands down absolutely you know 100 percent, i would be recommending them but fanatics got a problem with their ecosystem right now it's it's constantly i feel like we're in like a transition period where they're re-establishing their ecosystem but right now, it's a little bit difficult to really judge whether you should buy one product over another currently because everything's in flux. Like, I, I imagine that in six months, this video may actually be obsolete. They could just completely remove the CSL Elite pedals because they already discontinued the load cell. I honestly don't know why the Elites are still on the store right now when you have such a close direct competitor with the brand new CSL pedals that just got announced with their, oh, excuse me, with the CSL pedals that have already been announced and then the load cell just being announced for them right now, it's, if you're just getting into Fanatic products, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be going for those, um, unless if you just have a lot of money to spend and just really want the V3s or the inver inverted three V3s, which are like $700, which a bit much. So again, um, if you are highly considering the CSL Elite pedals because you don't find the rigidity of the normal CSL pedals enough for your use case, you have absolutely no issue with just the pedals as is. You have no intention of getting an uh, external shifter or needing a clutch pedal. Then buy it right now. Just do that. But if you're trying to save up your money, um, if you plan on needing a clutch pedal in the future or wanting to get you know, an external shifter and you don't have much money now, CSL pedals, absolutely. And if you do have money to burn, just, just go buy the V3s. Those, those are like the top of the line currently for Fanatic. So fine, do that, go do that. So again, that makes the CSL pedals in a really weird spot currently at the end of 2021. So really keep all of that in mind. Is it really the best option for you? Or, you know, 
or by the time that this video goes out, maybe we'll have an announcement saying that they sold out of the CSL Elite pedals. Maybe this will be completely irrelevant. But regardless, thank you all for watching this video. If you've gotten this far, of course, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Any little bit helps around here. Um, tell me about what pedals you guys have. Uh, if you've gotten something Fanatic related, or if you originally had something Fanatic and went to a different company and found better results from that, you know, let me know what you guys have for your setups. Definitely be interested to hear. But of course, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fabulous Friday. Take care. Bye.